Angela. It's your boy Quan. And we're back with another video. Today's topic is gonna be what? What? What, what is it? Be? Let's sex. talk about sex, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Okay. So, beginning topic. What do you feel like <clears throat> is a warm up? For having sex. Foreplay? Well, you know what type of foreplay. Well, you got, you, come on, you gotta lick some pussy. You come on. <laughs> like, I mean, we act like we all know. We know what foreplay means. You know, you gotta get your fingers dirty. You got to punch it before you munch it. You got to work it before you jerk it. <laughs> jerk. Boom. -la 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 -la. <laughs> you know what foreplay means. Okay, so what about role play? Role play, that ain't no... Playing role playing is what? Dressing up. No, no, no. Sex is not for dressing up. It's for undressing. Sorry. So you you feel like if your girlfriend came in and like some nice lingerie with some heels on. That's different. That ain't role playing. She got sexy for me. That's different. <laughs> that is role playing because they have the nurse what's outfit. She role play? So what's she wearing lingerie? What's she role playing as a hoe? <laughs> Yo. No. But they have different stuff. They have like schoolgirl outfits. Um, nursing outfits, mm. no stuff like that. What if she come in like I want to take your temperature? Alright, I'm a, I'm a, I'm up with it, but I'm not gonna come in there like yo, I'm the doctor's here, you know, okay. open up the cloak and shit like you know. I ain't even... So you feel like the main starter is head for warm up, for warm up. I, I mean, no, I mean, no. If you really, if you want really to be organic with it, you don't just start from saying. Hey, I'm about to suck some dick, or hey, I'm about to eat some pussy. You gotta be like, if you if you want to have some sex, sex, you it gotta be organic. You know, you gotta start from the top and the bottom. You know, you got to be touching on him first. You know, caressing him. Caressing on him. You work your way up from the caressing and you say, wah, wah, and you know. Then after that, then you gotta lick it, stick it. <laughs> you got to lick it before you kick it. You, you got to make it soft and wet before you stick it. Yeah. All right, well, I guess you gotta lick it to stick it. But I feel like you always gotta lick some to get it started. You could do some nice little. I feel like for women, sometimes a mood starter be like a massage. That's what I was just saying. I said when you no, touch you said you touching her. You motherfucker, what is a massage? You not touching her? You not rubbing on her? Listen, rubbing on us? listen okay. <laughs> touching and massaging is two different things. Cause touching, you could just be fondling her, but massaging her, you get the oil out. Well, you know. All right, all right, all right. If you want, if you want, if you want to be lip picking, all right, cool. Hold on. All right, so next topic. What do you feel like are some do's and don'ts? Mm, I don't know. There's a lot of do's. Like, I mean, yeah, you start off with that one. <laughs> um, all right, I feel like some don'ts are... You see how they have this meme going around on Facebook, like, oh, the clit and this and this, and women want you to just stay there? Mm -hmm. I feel like that's a don't. Don't stay on the clip. Don't stay in one part. Yeah, you could you could put a lot of focus onto the clip if you want, but don't just focus on the clip. Like you know, lick the whole thing. Am I dragging it? Mm. Lick, like you know, explore, get to know the area. If you stay on the clip, it's after a while, it's just like um. All right. I mean, okay. How, how are we talking about stay on the clip? Like, what are we talking about? Are we talking about just the clip? Are we talking about the clip area? Like, what are we talking about? Just the clip, like. I feel like this is real small. Like I mean, if somebody got the pinpoint tongue accuracy, hey, hell on them. But uh, I don't know. Like, but I feel like you know the clit. You leading the man astray right now. I'm uh -huh. sorry. To... <laughs> I feel like she. I feel like I feel like she's a, she's she's leading the man astray. I mean, Why? I feel like if first of all, if you can get to the clit to stay on it, to be like, look, because it half the time when when you eating pussy, all right, you lose your tongue stroke anyway. And then you gotta find it back, and the girl be like, "Oh, I was almost there." And then, and then I'm like, "My tongue cramped." <laughs> <laughs> like, 
you swear you got the right tongue stroke and then you lose it. You like they be moving like they like they almost finished and I'll be like, uh and then they then they stop. Like, like, uh, like, Fuck, all right, I, I love extra five, it. ten minutes of doing this shit. I mean, I guess. Well what what do you feel like are some don'ts when a female is giving you head? All right, don't use teeth, definitely. It's, don't hold this shit so fucking tight. Like like my fuckers be trying to squeeze a damn uh, a pressure ball. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Like how I'm supposed to enjoy you about to pop my dick off. <laughs> like <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> Okay. Well, no teeth. But no, I said no I said no squeeze too. No, don't get about that part. Don't squeeze either. Not too tight. Cause and then and then, and then, loose. And then they swear they Two swear stroke. they swear that little head. <laughs> but first of all, first of all, when they do stroke, they be like, yeah. like I be mean, like, first of all, and now I see, now I see, just because you jacking me all fast, I mean I'm going nut fast. Like that's not how that work. Like <laughs> a little too eager, you know. Then we doing the right things, but you know I digress. A little too eager. Well, do you express that to the person? Of course you do. Of course you do. Because you're not going to sit there and just get a trash head. Like, some people might sit for that. Not me, because it's just like, when you, it's, it's just annoying. The head? It's annoying. It's just annoying. Like, if if you, if it's just like, ah, uh, like, you're not, uh, like, you there, but you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. It's just like, I see what the women be talking about all the time. <laughs> okay. What about during the actual event like during sex don'ts yeah or mm. do's uh, i don't know sometimes i don't want to get too graphic with it just uh, just you know all right because sometimes when a girl be riding like you know because I, I guess on top is like a it's like a, a good position for girls and, and some shit like that but they get on there and they go ham and they, like and they be trying to break your dick off. That that's scary because just like yes, I'm I'm enjoying the sex and the vagina and everything. Yes, the wetness, you know. But I would like to enjoy it without breaking my dick in two pieces because people they be wild now. Like I'd be like, wait, hold hold on, hold on, because they be coming at the wrong angle and it it, it it just be bad. Okay. Um. Yeah, what's your don't? Um, and don't be shy because your husband ain't here. I feel. <laughs> 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 he behind the camera. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like dudes definitely for me is music. I feel like music sets the mood. See, now nah, that's the, that's the thing. Cause I so, yeah, I that's like a big do for me. Like, I like to listen to music. Because I feel like the music sets the tone. It puts you into whatever aura you're going to have during that moment. Like with me? So, like, if you're listening to romantic music, it might put you in, like, a passionate type of moment. But then, say, if you're listening to something a little bit more upscale and a little bit more fast paced then it might give you like back shot vibes <laughs> the thing about music for me i never could i don't like music like like i turn the tv on when i have sex like i turn the tv on and turn the tv up because i feel like music is just very oh, no, i hate that like because y'all y'all you know y'all live together like i live at the house with grandma and, and, and everything so i feel like it's more sus if i put music on especially with my playlist like i feel like music, tv I is a distraction I, like my playlist, like I, I I can't be fucking and watching the shuffle at the same time because I fuck around and be fucking and, and, and doing some back shots to Aretha or something. That's not that I can't I can't do that. I can't shuffle and make sure it's on the right music. That's only a handful of songs I got. Let me. That That's really why you have to songs. have a playlist made. All right, you yeah. make a playlist for the occasion. I don't be happy. Make you two. Make you one for when you want to be passionate. Make you one for when you want to be a little bit rough or. Um, if you just wanted to be a fuck, I always thought that music in the house make it sucks, but it's different for me. 
for y'all. I see. But yeah, music in the house make it sus. Yeah, but TV it it is sus. distracting because if you gotta play something and, and then now that's playing over y'all having sex. Well, the music playing say over Say something interesting happened. Now y'all both looking like what nah, the nah, fuck? This, the interesting Who's shit this is happening shit? on the Who's fucking this? What's All right, the that's what we gonna talk about. <laughs> Anybody, I turn the TV on and, and it's just back. Shit running. flashing in your face. Tune it out, okay? The TV is not on for me. It's for the people outside the room, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and me. Tune it out. <laughs> All right? So. Okay. So, what are your thoughts on drunk sex versus high sex? Okay, well, they're two different things. Definitely. Totally different. Definitely um, two different things. I'll say drunk sex is more like a fun type sex, but high sex, you trying to get nasty. I, I really believe that, cause drunk sex is like you drunk, and like, ah, uh, you know, I have a vagina, you have a vagina, I have a vagina. I feel you know, like you can get some puffing, you know. I could uh-huh. see that because high sex is more intense than drunk. Yeah, sex. high sex, you look, you smoking that one like everything is more at, intense. Yeah, you look at my friend. The like, nut is so more intense. Sexy. The strokes are more intense. Like everything. Ass over here, right? Like, like just like that. that it's wetter. That weed is that. That's Whatever. the actual. What do you call that shit? They, they, what, what what they used to call that shit? It's supposed to make you better in bed. They said oysters would make you better in bed. What is a name for it? I'm gonna come up with it though. Aphrodisiac. Aphrodisiac. Yeah, weed is the real aphrodisiac. If you had, if you want to talk about it, want to talk about it. True. I feel like when it comes to drunk sex. A lot of times, drunk sex is kind of like sloppy. Mm-hmm. So, but it's fun. It's fun, but if you're too drunk. You might not remember it. You might be like, "Damn, we had sex yesterday." You might fall asleep from being too drunk during sex. Like anything can happen. You might throw up. You might get nauseous, depending <laughs> on how drunk you are. Drunk sex, though, it's risky. Like you don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, you don't know what's gonna happen, but there's not a lot of thought and process put into it you're just going off the spare moment because you're drunk you're you're doing whatever when it's high sex i feel like when you're high you put a lot of focus into more stuff excuse me i feel like everything is more intense you you you're more in the mood to be like nah i'm about to bust your ass like it's especially if you got some fire music on when you high all right, we know, we know. You young, you can't listen to music. Shut your ass up. <laughs> we it's know. Not, it's not even that. It's but for even. those of y'all that can listen to music, listening to music during Talk high about sex, about listening to music, but she listen to the same fire. five songs. Nah, I I got a sex list play. Sex list play. Huh? I got a sex playlist. I don't know about you. Dyslexic too, huh? My sex playlist and what I listen to regularly are two different things. Mm-hmm. Okay, I ain't gonna quiz you on that. I'm but. That I also feel like because everything is so you you recognize stuff more when you're high. You ever listen to music when you're high versus when you're sober and when you're high it sounds like oh my god like sex in your ears. Who that snapping on the violin? That ass like whose song is this again? Got you looking at the fucking phone like oh shit might have to add this to the playlist. But also you you can notice a lot more and be a lot more into it. I feel like when you're high, you're a lot more focused on things. So it's like you tune everything out and it's all about what's in the moment. Versus, say, if you're sober having sex, it's just like, okay, we're having sex. And you do whatever like you normally do. Versus when you're drunk, you do what you normally do, just a lot sloppier, a lot more nastier, whatever. Mm-hmm. When you're high, really nastier, but when you're high, that's when you're nastier. Drunk, you just nah. I feel like drunk. You like when I when I say drunk, right, I feel like, drunk, like when okay, you drunk, you, it's like you, when you, you got with, that's you the, the most shit, slobber. Yeah, but, like say you give a head while you drunk, you slobbing all over it, you know, sucking nuts, stuff like that. Not saying that I do that, but I'm saying, I'm just saying. When you high, it's more you you put more intensive intensity into it. Like you're like nah, you about to feel this. Like they're so focused on it, and then when you get that good feeling going, it's like it makes you more in. Like it makes you like <laughs> I 
right, I'm gonna do this. Like, like this is about to be fire. Like, you gonna be on me, cause. Or am I wrong? <laughs> Nah, like, you're, not you're, not wrong, wrong. you're not wrong. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. I would think about something. You ever was high and you give a head and you feel like you're more into it when you're high than, like, say, if you were sober? I'm, I mean, I feel like eating pussy when you're high, you just get more tired easily. Your girl probably look more delicious to you when she hot, when you yeah, high. Yeah, but it's just like, oh, like, damn, girl, you look good over there. Like, that's that fine that's ass over like. here. <laughs> I just feel like. If I had to choose, it would be high sex for me. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I could keep that drunk sex. That drunk sex from time to time, yeah. Yeah, from time to time. But that right. high sex, that's where it's at. Okay. No, that's where the real magic happens. <laughs> okay, so we talked about some sex do's and don'ts. What do you feel like oh, are wait, some... Wait, 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 wait. We, we, should, we should at least say, yeah, we came back from a small break, right? They don't gotta know we took a break. It, I mean, took a small intermission. This is real life. All right. <sighs> okay. Back. So, we talked about some sex do's and don'ts. What are some relationship do's and don'ts for you? A whole lot. A whole no lot. Yeah, you know what I don't like? I don't like uh, all that. Messing with your ex heavy and all that, still talking to him. I don't like all that in a relationship. It's just like, you know, it's an ex, me, me, go away. Ex for a reason, like ex, ex out, ex out my life, you know? So, your life too. But that's one, that's one of the, that's one of the many things. What about you? I mean, I feel like for me, some, some do's and don'ts, don'ts would be like, don't always bump heads. Like, don't always feel like you have to make the, the 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 situation deeper than what it is. You know, there's some situations that in a relationship, one person might drag it because they want to be petty, cause an argument. But I feel like causing an argument and prolonging about it is pointless. All it does is get you worked up for even longer and waste up your energy when you could just talk it out, resolve whatever issues, and be back good and in good space, good vibes. Mm. I feel like when people constantly argue and pick fights and it, it's more negative than positive. So it's a it's a bad vibe. It's not a good vibe. And then eventually that's how a lot of the pushing away and drawbacks come into play because it's like ah I don't want to be around you because I already know what's going to happen today. Like, I know you're going to argue with me. That's how probably most people start cheating. Like, I right, I know I know this girl about to argue with me today, so let me hit up this bitch because I know she's not going to argue with me. We're going to talk about cheating. I think women got the... I think women got that shit all wrong. A nigga is not going to step out because you nagging him. A nigga is not going to step out because y'all arguing, a nigga's gonna step out because he wanna step out. Either or, I'm saying it it puts it into play. <laughs> I disagree. And why do you disagree? I just disagree. I mean, give feedback. Why do you disagree? Men step out when they're not satisfied, the same as women, in some type of area. Whether it be communication, sex, um, because they're bored within their relationship and the, the person they're stepping out with is just entertaining them. It, people step out for a number of reasons. Not because they just don't want to or, or just want to. It'd be, it'd be a, a specific reason why people step out. That's true. There is always a reason behind it. But you don't think that if, if you coming home from work or... If you waking up every day to somebody constantly picking a fight with you or arguing with you, you're not gonna be like, uh. Yeah, that's the reason right. we step out. That's yeah, a, that's what I'm saying. Oh uh, yeah, we yeah agree with you on that. Like, um, Stacy might be on some nagging, nagging John, but John's like, you know what? Let me just go to go to Suzanne because Suzanne don't nag me, but Stacy just be nagging me all the time, man. This is my ex 
my escape haven. Like I'm over here with it, cause I'm tired of dealing from it, dealing with it from this person. But can we also say, like, you know, Stacy House ain't the only house in the damn neighborhood. He ain't just she ain't the only motherfucker you know. So if you really, if you trying to, what you really trying to get away from, you trying to get away from a nagging. Or, or, or what? Because you can go to your mama's house if somebody nag in the same way. Your mama nag too. Your mama nag too. And your mama tell you business. <laughs> cousin house too? But you know, maybe your cousin tell you business. I don't know. It but depends. If, if Stacey ain't gonna tell and you then, business, she the only mistake whole water. Whole, okay. That's uh, that's another don't too. The business thing. Limiting who knows your business and your relationship is a key factor in having a successful relationship. Yeah. I feel like the more people that know the negative that goes on, the more people that's going to be putting their two cents in your relationship. When realistically, we don't really need anybody's two cents. We can make our own decisions. We're grown. Mm, still disagree. And why do you disagree? Because you have the instances where you, not you per se, but when you communicate with your partner and your partner don't, you know, y'all can have the conversation, but don't act upon it. It's just like, damn, like, I'm tired of going to my partner for this, you know, the same thing over and over and over and over. I'm, you know, you're supposed to just chuck up the L because your partner's not listening, or should you go to an outside party who could at least be the heir? Okay. You don't have to chuck it up to that. What I'm saying is, when you go to somebody else with your problems that's not initially part of that problem, you're, you're allowing... A, a open space like you're opening a door for people to come in and be judgmental on things that should only be between you and your partner yeah, the whole thing about venting is when you venting are, are you trying when you talk to the person are you trying to feel better or are you talking to them because you're trying to get it are you trying to solve the problem a lot of people just talk because yeah. they want to be heard yeah it's a lot of people you're trying just... to, you're not trying to go to the person Oh, I need help with this. You just want somebody to listen to you. Because a lot of times people be venting don't even want your help. So what are you venting to me for? You just want somebody, to, you just want an outlet. Yeah, like you yeah. just want to hear. But a lot of people intent don't be good with the type of information you give them. Okay. So now, when I say people's intent don't be good, what I mean by that is people just listen, well, a majority of people. Because some people gen generally just be, caring enough to want to listen when you vent but then you have the people who just use your vent as ammo and say like if something comes up or if y'all have a falling out they throw it back in your face so now it's like oh i see why this nigga out here fucking bitches on you and then it's like i told That's you that in confidence, confidence. like <laughs> like how you throw that back in my face when i vented to you about that it was a down period for me it was personal and i trusted you enough to tell you about that and then now that something's going on between me and you you throwing it in my face but that's the case the majority of the time when you let people in on your relationship you're taking a gamble like you're you're giving you're giving them information and then hopefully they do good and don't never bring that shit back up or things go bad and everybody knows your your business and then you have to also take an effect if you telling somebody something about your business they might tell somebody else that know you so now you got two people in your business and what people need and to then when two people three people yeah. somebody always tell somebody else like yo look at what i heard you'll never believe what such and such did to to what's the name like then it's like, damn, you got so many people in your business now that when you do want to fix it or when y'all are on good terms and get past it, those people are judging you. And they're like, oh, now y'all niggas is good? Wasn't he just doing this to you? Oh, you forgave him or you forgave her? Okay. So I feel like when you, when you vent to people, you know, yeah, you're doing it to express yourself or whatever, but you have to be mindful with what you say and how you say it what type of ammo you give to people mm -hmm. what people need to realize is that venting don't solve nothing the reason why it don't solve nothing is because none of the niggas that you vented to can solve none of your problems you're the only people the only people that can solve what you're talking about is the two people, uh, that's, three people that's involved with it so what people need to realize is that you need to learn how people need people need to learn problem solving skills solve your own damn problems because you can tell people but it's just all you trying to do is feel better about it you really want to feel better about it you need to solve that shit 
And that's the only way you can get around. It. So what happens then when you bring whatever problems to your partner and they just it's, it falls on deaf ears continuously? What well, that's on that's on them. You got somebody that don't listen, and you need to start. A lot of people don't. Sometimes people need to realize that if certain shit is not going right in relationship consistently, and y'all consistently getting into shit, wouldn't that tell y'all that y'all shouldn't be together? People need to realize if you got somebody that don't listen to you, you got somebody that you know don't care about you. At some point, you need to realize staying together is not the is not the point. Seven billion people in the world, okay. And this person, you you hear eighty years, and, and what you 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 because you got the a scarcity mindset, you believe that you never gonna find a love like this. Before that, you didn't think you was gonna find love like this. So what you need to do, you need people need to know how to cut their losses, cause and sometimes it's a very big L, but you gotta cut that shit at some point because if you if you're in a situation that's not serving you, not don't walk away from shit that's not serving you just cause it's not serving you a little bit, like. Uh, something like that. You need to. You need people need to be able to take stock in the situation, in their relationship, and need to be even, re, able to realize is this somewhere where I need to be? Because if you can talk to somebody you know, and, and, and about you, or something that's bothering them, or something that's bothering you, and they, and it don't seem like they're listening, then in, 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 in the back of their mind, if the people are gonna do what they want to do. So it, it's gonna make you feel like they don't care. So if somebody acting like they don't care, they're showing you. People are gonna show you before they tell you out their mouth. So if they showing you and constantly showing you, you need to take stock. Like, hey, maybe this is not the person for me. That's true. And just because you love somebody doesn't mean that y'all meant to be together. Y'all could love each other and be meant for somebody else. Every love that you go through is not the same. Everyone is going to be different. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like in a situation nothing good is coming out of it, but you want to work out something with that person because of the history, that's, that's really not a reason to stay. Cause there's other, there's other things to explore. There's other history to make. You sitting here crying ten years over the same guy, and ten years he's still cheating on you, or ten years he's still beating on you, or ten years he he's still treating you like you're nobody, and you like nah, I'm gonna suck this up and work it out. Or that eleventh year he decides, oh let me do something nice for her, and he does something out of the ordinary. It's like, okay, we're we're making that one step, but it's like, ten years he didn't do nothing, and then one that one step you're like, okay, it's like something positive is coming from it. But you know, if you would have cut your losses years prior to that, seven or eight or six of those years, you could have been with somebody amazing. Mm -hmm. You could have been with somebody that was making you feel like a queen. What you got? Is somebody that you could have built with see the world with but had a family with you know people just be having kids and staying in relationships because they have a kid with a person or because they have history with that person and nine times out of ten a lot of that history is not even good history a lot of that history could be heartbreak trauma y'all fighting and 10% or 15% of that history is actual good memories. I feel like if if it's that type of situation, then you have to let it go. If your if your bad memories outweigh your good memories, it just let it go. You have to love yourself more than you love that person. You gotta think what people need to do. You gotta think of a relationship as a house. Is a house that you and the person are building together. Now you may have came into the came to the empty lot with the best intentions. Y'all thought y'all was gonna build a fucking mansion on that hill. You know, y'all thought y'all was going to have five or six stories. You know, have six, uh, six, seven kids running around the house and shit like that. You know, sometimes vision change, plans change. Now, if you live in a house you and, and you building it and you living in it, and you have the, and sometimes you find out along the way that your partner don't got the tools and you don't have the tools to keep maintaining the house, okay? Now, the house falling apart and you can't pay for it, you can't fix it up. You don't stay and wait for the roof to cave in on your motherfucking ass. You move the fuck out. That's, that's what you do. You cut your losses and you move out. And sometimes you can move into a, a different house with that person, a smaller house, because y'all couldn't afford the bigger house. You see what I'm saying? Unless y'all change to get the tools to be, get that bigger house, either you're going to have to get a smaller house or you're going to have to move in with somebody else, or somebody got the tools, uh, uh, somebody got the missing tools for, for you. Sometimes y'all both got the same tools. Sometimes y'all got shit that work against each other and shit like that. But when you, you, don't, you don't stay in, the, in a crumbling house, you move out. And then again, in this day and age, with this generation, a lot of people choose who they they be with based on appearance and what they can do. A lot of people like to come to the house already made. 
And if you come to the house already made, what are you really offering? That causes friction because that's something that somebody built. And you came in and didn't contribute anything to it. And then now y'all y'all bumping heads and it's like you're tearing down what they built. And then you got home. Or they're tearing stuff. down what you built. Some people uh, overlook a person because they too nice. Or they don't got money. But That's about a reason if you ain't got money. In this guy. A nigga could have money and a mansion, the best cars, and you could still feel like you're alone and unhappy and like you don't have nothing with that person. Versus a nigga who only got ten dollars in his pocket, mm-hmm. probably still like renting a room from somebody or living at home with a family member, and they make you feel like like y'all have everything. Mm-hmm. Like I seen a tweet and it was about this um this dude. This person that worked with um around the rich white the rich white people and the, and you know the housewives and shit and they said what's the, what they used to hear a common thing it was like they talk about you know they come in the room they Gucci they Prada you know all 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 dripped out and shit and they, but they talking about their husbands and they, and you know all of them is saying you know everything all this is well nice but I wish he still listened I wish he still cared yeah and that's what they that's what they want like you need people people think just because you got. Uh, an abundance of one thing that makes up everything. You need a different thing. You need a child. You can't just feed a child peas every day. You got to give them shit. To, you got to give them a different amount of things, a d- different nutrition to help build their body. It's different stuff. And everyone, some people, you, you can't you can't grow up with a deficiency because somebody's not providing the right nutrition for you. That's true. And then a lot of people don't make the mistake of moving on and getting somebody really good and then going back to that ex or allowing that ex into the new relationship. I like that house a lot. <laughs> and then now it's, it's like you're jeopardizing. So now you're jeopardizing something that could put, possibly be a really great thing with something that wasn't worth anything in the past. Not saying that it wasn't worth anything, but you're... You're going to let somebody come in and destroy something that's being beautifully built. If, y'all got if that some, makes y'all sense. Gotta realize, y'all, are y'all looking at the same house? Are y'all both looking at the same house? And then a lot of the times, it's like, when you have when you find something good, why do you let that, that something bad from your past mess that up? Sometimes you got to just get over the ex. And how do you feel like you get over your ex? Hmm, under the next person. Under the next person. What the fuck? Um. When you no, because that's what people people don't want to be lonely. That's the thing. People don't people don't really miss their ex. They miss goddamn human touch. That's what they miss. Well, how that human touched you? I mean, that's true. But you can find somebody else that touches you better. Or. No. You can you can take that as time to learn yourself. All right. See, you don't have to always get under somebody to get over an ex. Not always. Yeah, you right. Maybe not always. Most of the time, though. Sometimes, you just have to live your life, learn yourself. A lot of us do long term relationships, and we learn the person that we are while we're with the person instead of the person that we are when we're with ourselves. And sometimes when you're going through a bad breakup, that's time that you need to take to learn who you really are. Not who you are with somebody else. Like, what do you like to do? Not what did you like to do with this person? What do you like to eat? Not what did you and this person eat? So what happens when you do know yourself inside and out of the relationship? That's I feel like good. Once that's you, good once you know people. yourself inside and out of the relationship... You'll move a lot better. And, but it's, you it, won't be looking at that ex like, damn, I miss him, or damn, I miss her. You'll be looking like, this nigga really lost out, or this bitch really lost out. See, but you, you, we, we, we talking about a finished problem. Knowing yourself, like, a lot of people... Knowing your worth. A lot of people... Well, a lot of people... Not just knowing your worth, but you gotta know your own self. Because a lot of people can't uh, are not prepared to look in the mirror and actually tell themselves, well, this is wrong with me, and this is wrong with me. I need to move accordingly. Because a lot of people just be acting like, well, that's just me. That's just me. But And not realizing that just you needs a lot of work. So, 
That's true. Sometimes when you break up with somebody and you start paying attention to yourself, you start no- noticing flaws you start that you can change. A lot of people don't think they wrong. But then you also have to step back and look at the picture. Not only look at what this person does wrong, but look at what you do wrong too. Kind of maturity. I feel like, for me, in an example, I've had relationships where I knew myself while I was in that relationship. And then when I got out of that relationship, in order for me to get over that relationship, I had to get to know me as a person. And I had to get to know and love the person that I was. And I want to change who I was to be with somebody. I had to want to be with somebody who wanted to be with me for me. And not try to change me or not want to change myself so that this person could love me more or stop doing whatever they were doing to me. And that's that's the case with pretty much everybody. It's like a repeating cycle. You you have to go through something traumatic and take that as a lesson learned and then build from that. A lot of people don't take that as a lesson learned and build from it. A lot of people take that L and just go back. And that's how a lot of relationships end, end up like in bad situations to the point where those people don't even want to contact with each other no more. Or see each other. Or when they see each other, they're walking past each other. Also, if you want to get over an ex, get high. You don't care about people who you are. I mean, <laughs> he ain't going to be high forever. See? I mean, you're not. You're not going to be high. But... On the times that you need to forget, you could be high. I'm just saying. I don't feel like, you know, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. Cause after you, she can be like, yeah, uh, uh, you feel better if you're high. But you know what? A blowjob make me forget too from another person. That's good point. Get up real quick. That true. Okay. You got a point. That's going to be the wrap up for this video, guys. If you liked it, make sure you comment, subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the little bell so that you can know when we post again. Until next time.